Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today, yes, we're doing Scenario 10, the final scenario in Zaya Legends of Adrift System solo campaign. If you're watching this, I surely hope you've seen the other nine so you know where we're at. Don't forget to turn on those Klingon subtitles just in case I miss any sort of editing. You should see them popping up right here. And with that, let's set up for our final game. In some ways, it kind of makes me sad. <laughs> so what I decided to upgrade for my solo campaign is the uh, now I can do this action to heal one and gain an energy as a minor action two times a turn. We'll then start drawing our tiles. Our first one is the Tigris Gate. I love the Tigris Gate. And I apparently drew two there. We have the Vortex 86 and the Expedia Gate. That definitely gives me enough spawn points. But don't forget, I have my Lightning Victory. So I get to look at the next five tiles and choose one to add to setup. So I have the Grinder. I have Azure, or a planet. I want to do a planet. I have uh, Blench. I have uh, the Samra uh, gate. And the last one I have is the Delta's gate. Wow, all the gates are showing up. Let's choose Blench here because we can get some of the Ember and hopefully use that for some quick fame and some additional money. I'll then shuffle the rest of these back in as well as pulling out Kemplar 2 and Loth, making sure they're within the top seven. Our final Zaya universe is going to look like so. I have Blench nice and close to the kiln. I have the Expedia Gate over here and the Tigris Gate here so I can get that fame point pretty quickly. I have the Vortex 86 and the Exploration Token here. Here we have the Economy Board. We have the most Cyber and the least amount of Plasma and Spice. Because of our titled master ability, we get to look at the top four titles and decide if we want them on the top or the bottom of our deck. Destroy two enemy ships in one turn. I think I'm going to keep this one. I think I'm going to go taking out enemies because I have a card. One of the upgrades that I have is that when I destroy an NPC, I gain one additional fame. So I want to take out NPCs and gain that additional fame ASAP. So I'm going to keep that on top. I think I could do the Ember potentially because I am so close to that. So sell at least four ember in one turn and become stranded in a nebula. Ah, that just seems, that seems like I'd have to go into a nebula over and over again to make sure it happened. <laughs> so I think these two, uh, I'm going to put on the bottom of the deck. We only have one more scenario left, the convincing victory. This is to 20 fame. This is for all the cookies and milk. <laughs> the NPC player starts the game with 10 fame. Remove the social, Socialist Merchants event from the game, then draw extra titles and event cards during the setup as needed. So all we need to do is get to 20 fame before they do, and they start at 10 fame. What this means is we'll draw 1, 2, 3, 4 events and 1, 2, 3 total titles. Our first event will be the Mother Load. The mining spaces in Astro asteroid fields now have the following rules. Instead of the normal results for mining, you can instead 1 through 5 take double damage, 6 through 10 gain 1 cargo, cargo cube, 11 through 17 gain 1,000 credits, 18 through 20 gain 3,000. Oh, and it collapses. That's our first of four events. Oh man, having four out right away. Wow. Second one is Galactic Jubilee. Players may travel to the kiln and receive credits one time as an action according to their current position on the fame track. First place, we get 1,000 credits. Second place, 2,000. Third, third place, 3,000. Fourth place, blah, 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 blah. Place a damage on this card at the end of each round. Immediately after all players have received their credits or there are three damage on this card, we discard it. Okay, so that might help us. We could get some credits going to the kiln. We are in second place. So that's 2,000 credits. We have Rikishi on the board. That almost makes me happy. Rikishi is one of my favorites. <laughs> and then the last one we have, Grav Shift. At the start of each round, roll 1d20 twice. Take the sector that has a spawn point number closest to the first. Oh, yeah, and they switch. But if we roll a 20, then this dissipates. Uh, does that do it in the first round? I, I, I'm going to say it does. That's going to make it fun. We need to draw three titles, but don't forget in the solo game, you start with one out on the board. So we actually need to draw four. We know the top two. The first one is the Quirier, sell at least four Ember. And then the second one is destroy two enemy ships in one turn. The next two we do not know. And we have destroy the Enforcer. Oh man, we could get five fame. We took out the Enforcer and one other ship. 
And the last one is Velocity Warden. Fly to a mission point in each of the sectors in one turn. Asteroid, planet, nebula, debris. I've chosen the Easy Tiger for this final scenario simply because I wanted its ability. <laughs> Its ability will allow us to reroll one die. It doesn't sound super helpful, but you have to remember, I've got ways to give myself additional movement with the plus five. My impulse is great. I can heal. But one thing I can't do is if I roll and do a terrible roll on asteroids and take 10 damage, this is a get out of jail somewhat free card. So that's why I felt like this would be a good one for this scenario. Expedia was the second gate found. The discovery of their true purpose, instantaneous transportation of physical matter, was not thought to be possible. Science had long since hit a wall in the area of teleportation. The gates brought those beliefs crashing down. Trade between systems flourished, a new era of prosperity began. Governments and corporations galaxy-wide poured trillions of credits into the drift system of Zaya, hoping to gain the secrets of the gates. But try as we might, it's beyond us. The ancient ways in which they were constructed could not be retro-engineered. Before we start our turn, we have to do our grav shift. Let's roll our d20. Oh, we rolled a 20 right there. Well, the grav shift just dissipated. <laughs> oh, what a way to start the scenario. I think we all know what we're going to start with this turn, and that's with a double scan. We'll scan here first, and we have the red gulch. And then on this side, we will have TK421. We've got a nice asteroid area over here, but I don't think I'm going to go over there. I think what I'm going to do is try and get over to Blanche. So let's use our first engine. We need fame and we need it fast. We're already 10 behind. Let's use our engine. We'll roll a D6, adding 5. We have 10 movement. With our 10 movement, we'll go 1, 2. We'll be able to draw 3 missions, and we'll look at it at the end of our turn. We'll then use movement three to move here. We have to roll a D is six and we get a one. So this comet moves a whopping one space. I'll put that back here. Then we have movement four, movement five, movement six. We'll draw three more missions. That means we'll have six to look at at the end of our turn. Movement seven, let's move into this ice asteroid. An 11 through 20 would be great. How about a seven? Boy. We are definitely going to use, oh wait, should we use Easy Tiger? Let's use Easy Tiger. That will spend one energy. So our Easy Tiger lets us re-roll one die. We're going to re-roll this. I don't want that. And instead we get a six. <laughs> okay, that means we're going to use our shield and we're going to block. I got to find a D6 somewhere. Here we go. We're going to block for a total of five. So we take one ice damage. We'll place that ice damage right here. We will get to grab this exploration token. We have plus five movement. I'm not going to use the five movement because all I'm going to do is move into this query space. This is definitely risky, but we have to be risky in this scenario. Looking for some ember. We have a 15. That is higher than a 10. So we have one ember. Should we do that again? <laughs> Let's do that again. We'll roll this up. We have another 15. That's two ember. Now I really want to get four. Do I stretch it here? Or do I not? Well, why wouldn't I stretch it if I'm there? That's an 11. That's three. Okay, if we have three, let's do one more. One more. Come on, that's a 16. We just gained four beautiful ember. Now, that is what I'm talking about. Look at that ship. Four ember. Let's use our impulse of six. With our first move, we'll move here. So we have four movement left. The comet's going to move three. One, two, three. Perfect, just got out of our way. We'll move two, three, four, jumping onto the kiln. The kiln will then move a total of five spaces. We'll have the kiln move one, two, three, four, five, right here. Our ship is in this space right here. We will sell 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 8,000 credits. I'm gonna use the right credits this time, five and three, and that will gain us a fame point as well. Those NPCs won't know what hit them. <laughs> We're still nine behind, and we will get a fame for that courier at the end of our turn. We'll then use the Galactic Jubilee here and gain 2,000 more credits because we're in second place. After that very fruitful time at the kiln, let's use our next engine pull. We'll add five to this roll. We have six movement. We'll jump out of the kiln here for movement one. Movement two, movement three. Let's grab three more missions. 
after grabbing those three missions, movement four is here, and movement five, we're going to gain the fame point and randomly spawn somewhere. Two fame down, 18 to go. We'll roll our D at 20, and we have a 17. The closest spawn point to 17 is 19 right here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tigger's Gate. So we have one movement left because we went one, two, three, four, five to use that. Then we had a total movement of six. So where do we want to go? I'm thinking I want to go to Vortex 86, get this uh, exploration token, and hopefully end my turn at the kiln. Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to move here. Using the final armed marker we have here, let's roll our D6. Adding five to this roll, five plus three is eight. With our eight movement, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. But we have to now see if that nebula sucks all of our energy. I just realized I have no shields for this. And we got a 15, so we're okay. We then can reveal this token, and we have a captain in need. This captain is going to Kreller 4. I have no idea where that is, so I'm just going to jettison it. With those two exploration tokens, I probably should go fame but I'm going 2,000 credits. I'm looking to pump up my next ship, and I'm ready to take out some of these NPCs. I believe I have one more movement, so I'm going to move here, and then I'm going to scan both of these spots, starting here. This will be a Loth. Nice, I can get an NPC on the board. And this one over here will be the Delta Skate. We have yet another fame point that looks super tempting. I might actually go for it, and then I can use my action to jump back to the kiln at the end of my turn so that I can still level up. Yeah, I think I might do that. Let's roll, though, to see how the Scoundrel is going to act for this scenario. The Scoundrel is going to be a 4-3-4, a bully. That means he's going to target the player if tier 1 or 2, move to target if in range, attack if no damage is dealt, attack again. Oof. And he will be on my immediate right side. We're definitely going to use our action to be able to rearm one of our tokens and then arm our engine one more time to roll a d6. I'm trying to calculate if I could jump right to a tier 3 ship, but I don't think I can. 5 plus 4 is 9 movement. What we can do, though, for sure, is 1, 2, and then 3, use this, and show up all the way over here, gaining us another fame point. We'll still have a total of 6 movement remaining. That's three fame in our first turn. Not too shabby. Should we milk this ember for all it's worth? Yes, we should. One, two, three. And we're going to roll for that comet. One. It's going to move here. And then four. We're going to stop here. If we can query two or more ember, use our action to jump back to the kiln. Wow, that's going to be an awesome turn. We just need an 11 through 20 twice. We have a one. We'll take one damage. We'll place that singleton damage here on our shields. Come on, Ember. Come on, Ember. That's a six. Well, we just lost our shields and our engine. <laughs> if I take four more damage, I'm done for. So do I keep going or do I stop? I have a couple tricks up my sleeve, so I think I'm going to keep going. I'm looking for another fame point and up to 4,000 more credits. It's going to be worth it. Oh, that's an eight. I was really hoping to use this ability when I was attacked, but I'm going to use it here. Once per game when taking damage, you may block all the damage without using a shield, even if that damage would otherwise be unblockable. This is unblockable, and you can't use it if you fly into the sun. Uh, so that's good. I blocked it, but now I ha I'm being a lot riskier. What's life without a little bit of risk, though, right? <laughs> we have an 18. That's one ember. Now it's the question of do we do it again? If I get one more ember, it's a fame point. It's a fame point. Or do I just take that for an additional 2,000 credits? Oh, let's try it again. Come on, an 11 through 20. That's all I need. That's a 17. Worth it. Worth it. Worth it. Our ship is literally down to its last legs, but we do have two cargo. Let's use our action. Once per game, as an action, you may place your ship at the kiln. That means we will jump right to the kiln. We then have to roll a D6. It's going to move one whopping space to here. And let's go ahead and sell both of those ember for 4,000 more credits. <gasps> Can we get ourselves right to a tier 3 ship? I'm not quite sure about that. I have to do some calculations, but I for sure can move up to four fame because I sold 
all the cargo that I could and it was a minimum of two. And just so I don't forget, I'm gonna claim the fame from Courier because I did sell, I sold six Ember in one turn. <laughs> this will put us to five fame. This was certainly a solid first turn. We will regenerate all of our energy. Let's take all that ice off. And then we're most certainly leveling up to a level two ship. It's gonna be the question of if I can get to a level three. I would need eight plus five, that's 13. I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I definitely have enough. I could go right to a tier three ship. That would generate me two fame, but then I can't buy all the awesome outfits I want to be able to take down some of those NPCs. So I've got to decide what I want to do here. She's a unique ship, to put it nicely. But she stole your heart at first glance. The dealer told you 80% of her is 100% to another ship, and that's that. You're not quite sure what he meant, but the ship is grand. You keep finding new passages and secret compartments filled with long forgotten gizmos and small treasures. You could live a lifetime and not know all her secrets. She's got some tricks up her sleeve and that suits a maverick such as yourself. Yes, we can see here we leveled up to a level three ship right away. So that means we're gonna gain two more fame. I did this because I had a total of 16,000 credits. So 5,000 for the first ship, 8,000 for the second, that's 13,000, and then 3,000 for our uh, blaster here for 16,000 credits. This is by far the most fame I've ever gained in one turn, that's seven fame. We gained two because we leveled up our ship twice, once to level two and once to level three. We only had one level two ship to choose from, and that was the Ocom's Razor, so we chose the Pyreon Railgun. So this, we can target a ship up to eight spaces away with clear, not, clear line of sight. As an action, spend two energy, roll. We can choose one outfit. Now, since these, we're only attacking NPCs, we'll just be dealing either one, two, or two damage. Really, that's all we're going to do here. We also have our shockwave ability from Slow Leak. Target all adjacent ships to which you have line of sight. As an action, spend three energy, and then certain things can happen. We can deal three damage and it's pushed one space away. And the fun part is this down here. Ships are pushed in a straight line away from your ship. Ships pushed through borders must roll as if they've moved through there, but they do not receive a bounty. All kills from borders are considered yours. Ships cannot be pushed into unexplored or occupied spaces. <laughs> this could be a lot of fun. We had a total of nine missions. The one I chose to keep was the Bounty Hunter. We have to find and destroy an outlaw ship. That's easy. We know the scoundrel is out. Once we do that, we have to deliver the remains to TK421. Depending upon what we roll, we'll get credits, but the big thing is we'll get some fame. We'll do system expanse next. We have to choose here or up there. Let's choose down here, matching the blench. And we have my favorite tile, Farron's Call. We'll then move to the NPC turn. We're no longer a level one or level two ship, so this scoundrel is too scared to come and do anything to us. So it's just gonna sit there and we're simply gonna roll for the NPCs. They're currently three fame ahead of us, so no adding to their roll. They roll a 15, that's two fame. That means they'll move from 10 to 12 fame and we get to reveal another title. That title is the Raider, destroy the merchant ship. <laughs> Oh, we're going to have some fun in this game. What's awesome is that we're ending our turn on the kiln. So we're going to place one damage on here. But to start the next round, we can just gain another 2,000 credits before leaving. And then the Rikishi is simply going to move. Let's see which way this asteroid's going to move. A five. Oh my gosh, it's going to move one. So it just misses this. Two and three. It's going to block off our way of getting out of the kiln and trying to go towards the scoundrel. We're going to have to go around a Nira. That is obnoxious. I guess we could go around this way, but we have to go into the nebula. We'll start our turn by gaining the 2,000 credits because we are at the kiln and we are in second place. Then we are going to use our teeny tiny engine on our huge ship. <laughs> we'll roll our D6. We have a 6 plus 5 is 11. We'll jump out of the kiln right here for movement one. Movement two will move into the nebula, so we have to roll for that. We need an 11 through 20. We have a natural 20. The slow leaks first test, and it's looking like a good ship. We have nine more movement. We'll go one, two, three, 
four. And let's see what we get there. Just not a one, two, or three. How about an 18? We'll take that. We certainly have two more movement left. We'll move one, two, right next to the scoundrel. But before attacking, do we want to just use one more movement in blind jump? Or no, no we're going to stop moving. No blind jumping. No reason to be that risky. Let's just scan. That'll cost us one of our 17 energy. Look at that energy. It's ridiculous. We're on this tile, so we have to match that symbol, and we have the chasm. Well, that's going to take away my idea of moving here and trying to shove the scoundrel against that border, because the moment I move here, I'm going to get shoved this way. Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. So I think I'm just going to stand where I am. I'm going to use my blasters. We'll use two armed markers. That means we're going to roll two d12s to the d8 of the scoundrel. We only need 15 damage here. Let's see what we do. We roll 11 plus 5 is 16, but then he has 6 there, so that means we dealt 10 damage. We'll use one energy so we can take off one of our armed markers and try this one more time with just the d12. We just need 5 damage here. We rolled a 4 to a 6. Let's use our easy tiger. We'll go down to 14. Let's re-roll this. Come on, be something high. A 10, that's 4 damage. This means we're one damage away. Let's use two energy and use our Pyron Railgun. All we need is an eight or higher, and we'll be able to take out that scoundrel. Because remember, this is unblockable, so we don't roll any defense. Come on, eight or higher. We have a nine just enough. This will mean we will gain ourselves 2,000 credits for taking out the scoundrel. And we have found and destroyed an outlaw ship. A Kemplarian officer is awaiting for you in the starport. Captain, your exploits have reached my ears and I have need of your help. There is a certain crime ring, Bross, that needs taken care of. It's been taken care of, friend. Now all we need to do is get to the mission point at TK421 for another fame point. We also have our Fierce Fighter. Once per game when you destroy an NPC ship, earn one extra fame or double the money. I'm going fame, that's what we need. So we're gonna gain two fame for taking out the scoundrel. Two fame will put us to 10. Can you believe it in two turns, we went all the way from zero to 10 fame. <laughs> we're only two behind the NPCs. This is a very interesting map and I've got tons of choices. So I have one more engine use and my impulse of five. Here's the thing, I could just run back to the kiln. If I did that, I would be able to upgrade my ship and get the 2000 credits for the next turn because I'd still be behind in fame. That's tempting. But I could also, because I have so much energy, I could instead take the chasm, see me where, see where it goes, do Farron's call, and then I'd end somewhere over here. The next turn, then I could get myself over to TK421. The only kicker is that I am not near any sort of planet after I do that. And if I end up being out here for another round, I might start running out of energy. I could also just go into Loth, but if I do that, I become an outlaw, and I don't know how the Enforcer is going to act, so I'm not entirely ready to do that. Also, the Scoundrel will respawn, and it's going to respawn with a new behavioral card. It might be chasing us down. So, yeah, do I go for the kiln, or do I go this way? Let's see how much movement we have before we decide that. We'll roll our D6. We only have six movement. With that low of a roll, I think we have to go this way. We're going to move one, two, roll for the debris. Just not a one, two, or three, a 14, we're good. We have to go around Rikishi, four, five, and that means you need to roll for the nebula. And we get a 12, so we're still good. We'll move six here, and then our impulse of five, one, two, three, jumping back into the kiln. Yeah, I love the kiln. The kiln is the best place ever. We'll roll. The kiln's going to move one space. Gosh, I was hoping it'd move more than that. At the kiln, we will power up our engines or shields. We will replenish all of our armed tokens. And I do think we're going to do some buying. So I think I'm going to sell this engine so I have 5,000 credits to play with. This, to me, finally looks like a Tier 3 ship, a D12 engine. We just need to get a GTS here, maybe an M Comp here, so we can get a couple additional missions. And we're just going to blow ships from the sky with two minus fours here. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And our two attacks. 
We don't have an option this time. We have to place the tile here matching this symbol. And yes, there's Kemplar too. We'll have the Enforcer sit on our immediate left side. Now let's roll for his behavior and re-roll for the Scoundrel because the Scoundrel will now respawn. The Enforcer will be 4, Corrupt. He'll target the player if the player is an outlaw. He's going to move towards the target twice. If in range, the player may pay 1,000 credits per tier, so that'd be 3,000 for me. If no payment, he's going to attack me twice. <laughs> Good thing I am not an outlaw. The scoundrel's new behavior will be opportunist. We know this one. He's going to target the player if we're damaged or carrying cargo cubes, moving in range and attack, doing that twice. The Scoundrel will then spawn in a random location with 1 damage because its tier is level 1, around 19. Well, what do you know? There is a 19 spawn point right here. Now the enemies or NPCs would activate. The Scoundrel isn't going to do anything, and the Enforcer isn't going to do anything. They're both going to sit there. There's no Merchant because we have only Loth and Kemplar 2 on the board, so we're just going to roll for fame. They don't get any additions to their roll because they're still uh, one, two fame ahead of me. We'll roll that D20 for them. They rolled a 2. At a 2, they gain no fame. <gasps> oh, yes, this is our time. We'll place our second damage on the Galactic Jubilee. And just so I don't forget, because I am at the kiln, when I take my first action, I will be gaining 2,000 credits because of this. That card's are ridiculous. Then we'll do Rikishi. Rikishi will now activate. We'll roll. We rolled a two. Are you serious? We rolled a two? <laughs> that means Rikishi's going to move one. It's going to move two, destroying the scoundrel. And it's going to move three, destroying this comet. So the scoundrel will show up at the beginning of the next round. Wow, but that means we can't take him out. The only NPC we have that we can attack is the Enforcer. Now I'm getting super tempted to take down the Enforcer because if I remember right, one of the uh, objectives or titles was to destroy the Enforcer. But let's see how much we roll for our D12. We're adding 5 to it, and then we can decide. We'll roll up our D12. We have a 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. When the opportunity presents itself, it's hard to say no. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're right next to the Enforcer. He does have 17 health and rolls a d12 for defense, but we're going to have minus 8 to his roll. So we're going to roll 2 d12s versus his 1 d12 minus 8. We'll roll these 2 d12s for an attack. He's going to roll this d12 for defense. Let's give him a roll. We want to see high numbers from us. He only has a 1. 10 plus 10 is 20. Minus 1 is 19. We just took out that Enforcer. We annihilated him from the sky. That'll be two fame for us because he's a tier two ship. And at the end of our turn, no problem, we'll be able to claim the Insurgent title. And that's two more fame. That was worth four fame to take out one ship. Worth it in gold. I was hoping for a good roll, but I was not expecting it to be that good. <laughs> Let's roll for our next D12 engine. We'll roll up our D at 12. We have 12 plus 5 is 17 movement. I do need to mention we are now an outlaw ship because we just attacked a lawful enforcer and killed him. <laughs> so we have 17 movement. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're right here to complete our mission. We'll roll a D20 to see what we get for destroying that scoundrel. And we get a 10. So a 10 is fully intact but dead. 3,000 credits and a fame point. That'll put us to 5,000 total credits. We're now pushing ourselves into the lead. We need to remember to draw an event at the end of this turn. I think it's time to use our Expert Explorer ability and flip all of the Exploration tokens face up. I want to see which ones I want to go for to maybe get some more fame. We have Spice and Plasma over here. Lots of ice damage at Farron's Call, which is hilariously thematic. We do have a captain in need in this asteroid. We have plus five movement over there and full energy at Kemplar 2. Let's use one energy to then rearm this token and then use it to roll a d12. We're looking for lots of movement here if we can, and 11 plus five is 16 movement. Even with our slow leak, we should be able to move one. Two, let's roll for that asteroid. We have 14 movement remaining. 
Rolling up that D20, we have a 9 for 9 damage, and I have no shields. Not gonna lie, that kind of hurt a bit. <laughs> we still have 14 movement though, and we've claimed that exploration token that gave us five more movement, so we have 19 movement. We should have known moving into an asteroid field with this ship <laughs> wouldn't go so well. So we have 19 more movement. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and let's do it again. This means we still have 12 movement remaining and we have another nine. That's gonna destroy our ship. Instead of being destroyed, let's use our Resurgent. Once per game when your ship would be destroyed, it is not destroyed. Instead, place it on a random spawn point and heal all damage. We will not have any more movement left, and we won't pick up that exploration token. I should have known. Why did I try again? I was hoping that we had learned from our mistakes. Uh, we'll still have our impulse of five, but that's it. Let's see where we spawn in location 10. Spawn point 10 is right here. Here Now, we have five impulse, but I can't get onto a planet, and I can't hide from the Enforcer, because we know that Enforcer is coming. So what I think I'm going to do for that impulse, I'm going to move one, two, and that's going to allow me to draw three missions. <gasps> so I've got three missions here. One, two, three, four, and then I'm going to sneak into this asteroid field and hope I don't blow up. But then that way, he will not have line of sight on me. Please tell me third time is the charm. It's a 19. We're good. Unfortunately, at the end of our turn, we cannot do a business phase because we're not on the planet or the kilns. So we're just going to spend four energy to rearm these markers, and then we'll draw an event. Before that, though, we have our insurgent that we can claim. Destroy the enforcer. Check. The enforcer cannot target you for the remainder of the game. So I think that I actually didn't need to worry about the Enforcer. He can't even target us. Two more fame also means we're going to draw a new title and a new event, and we're five away from winning the game. Our new uh, title that we can do is the Traveler. Start by using the Tigris, then the Expedia, then the Deltas, and then the Tigris Gate again. <laughs> wow. I don't think I'm going to be doing that. <laughs> Let's look at our event. Re-Tethered. Tigris Gate is now connected to the other gates, and players may move freely between all of them. The special rules for Tigris Gate are ignored. If the Traveler's title is unclaimed, discard it. <laughs> and draw a new title. I just drew the Traveler's title, so we'll discard that. Instead, our new title will be the Collector. Without making a purchase from the Smuggler's Den, have at least one of each of the five cargo types. We have a nice and even universe right now, so I can choose anywhere. I'm potentially hoping for a planet, although I don't really want the merchant out. But if I get a planet over here, that'd be kind of nice. Now we got a dead planet, Calacus. We'll now spawn the two NPCs. The scoundrel won't do anything when he spawns because we're not damaged or have cargo. But we don't know what the enforcer's behavior will be, but I don't know if it really matters uh, if it targets us because he cannot target us. The Scoundrel will spawn by location 10, and the Enforcer by location 11. And don't forget the Enforcer comes in with 2 damage because it's considered a tier 2 ship. They spawned on two opposite sides of the board. 10 is over here, 11 is here. Let's see what this, uh, the Enforcer's new behavior will be. And I forgot to look at our missions that we drew, so we'll pick one of those. We'll roll that D8. He has an 8. He's a big game hunter. Usually, this would mean he'd target us because we're an outlaw at a tier 3, but from how I understand it, he will not target us. He's just going to sit there. We'll do the fame roll for the NPCs. They're going to add 6 to their roll. They have a 16, that's 22. With 22, that's 3 fame. This will put us neck and neck. The mission we're going to choose is the smuggler. We need to pick up some contraband in the Red Gulch, which is actually where we're at, and then we just need to go to Loth. At the end of the round, the Galactic Jubilee is finally going to be discarded. A little bit sad about that, but Rikishi will continue its movement. Where is Rikishi going to go? That's a two, one, two, three. <gasps> oh, thank goodness. Fortunately for us, we stayed out of Rikishi's range, even though it was trying to get us. <laughs> I think with this, we're ready to start the next round. To start our activation, we are going to use our impulse just so we can move here. We are now at the mission point at Red Gulch. Transport illegal goods. And if anyone asks, we never met. This never happened. 
Some items need to be held for safekeeping. What better place to hide them than on a world full of criminals? So we've just picked up the contraband, and now we need to sneak to Loth. First engine use, here we come. Rolling our D at 12, we have a 12. Seriously, 12 plus 5 is 17. We're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4. This means we have 13 movement remaining, and we rolled a 13. We're okay. This Captain in Need is trying to go to the Ruins of Drelmoth. Not on the board, so I'm just going to jettison him. And then I do have two Exploration Tokens. I'm going to trade those in for a Fame Point. This will move us to 16 Fame. And if we don't finish it this round, we'll have to draw an event. With 13 movement remaining, we'll move 1, 2, 3. So we have 10 movement remaining. And we get some Ice Damage. There really isn't any great spot to place that ice damage, so I just placed it here, but we already have one out of the two exploration tokens for another fame point. We have 10 movement remaining. We'll move down to 9, roll up a D at 12, we get a 5. That is going to be more than enough to... Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, 1, 2, 3, we're now on here. If I roll a 6, I'm going to cry just a little bit, and we rolled a 2, thank goodness, so we'll move 1, 2, and since we end our movement there, we can pick up this exploration token and we get some more ice damage if you've watched all my other playthroughs you know i can't leave farren's call alone i love farren's call so we have two exploration tokens but a second uh, ice damage with nine movement remaining we only need three more fame to win we're going to move one two three pick this up and this will be our third ice damage totally thematic for running around farren's call we have six movement left We'll move one, two, three, four, five, and then six to move here, having to roll a d12 again, and we have to move four, one, two, three, four, and that will end that first engine pull. That was a solid turn. Now we can use our engine a second time, and let's see where we fly. Rolling a d12, we get a 10, plus five is 15. With our 15 movement, we'll move off of Farron's Call for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We'll gain another bounty, 12, 13, 14, 15. You know what? I almost forgot about the sneak test. We need to do this sneak test. We need a 13 to 20 to succeed and complete this mission. We'll give our die a roll, and we have a 14. We're good. The Red Gulch is three sectors away from Loth, so that means we just gained 5,000 credits and a fame point. We now have 10,000 credits. This means we're at fame 18 out of 20. Not to mention we just gained our second exploration token. Let's discard both of these for another fame point. This will put us at 19 out of 20. I think I have a plan to get our last fame right here and win the game. The first thing we're going to do is spend those two actions that we have to repair one and generate one energy. So we're at 14 energy. The biggest thing is I needed another space to be able to place some more cargo. I just need one more uh, cargo, go back to Loth, sell it, and then I can win the game. So let's do it. Rolling our D at 12, we've got an 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. With 13 movement, we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have to roll a D6. We get a 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I think I counted wrong. It should be here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <gasps> we should have 5 remaining movement. We'll move 1. And we're still on that same gravity path, so we're okay. 2, we're going to pick up this exploration token, which is going to give us some plasma. We have three movement remaining, and all we have to do is get back to Loth with those two pieces of cargo, and we can win the game. We'll move here for one of the three movements. Come on, push me all the way to Loth. And we get a three. One, two, three. We have two more movement. One, two, and that should be it. I Oh, I can still rearm my engine. We'll spend one energy to take one of those armed markers and then put it back on our engine for another roll. And we get a three, five plus three is eight. And that, my friends, should do it. One, two, three, four. We gained another bounty. I forgot to gain the other one, but it doesn't matter. We're going to sell those two pieces of cargo at Loth and win the game. In the time that the NPCs gained five fame, we gained 20. Wow, that was epic. The cards were dealt, you went all in, and came out with a royal flush. Well, it was more of a full house. Ten high, but a victory is a victory. You're now the most notorious and deeply admired slash hated captain to ever sail the high sea of stars. 
Fame has smiled upon you and granted you everything you've ever wanted. A ship and a star to sail by. There you have it. That was the campaign. I actually have no idea what my score is. I will calculate it and put it up right here. It should be showing up. Uh, remember that I did not complete one of the missions, so technically I'm not done with this entire uh, the, the solo campaign. I'd have to go back and do that one specific scenario where I needed to complete seven missions for fame. I missed one. <laughs> So that would mean I would need to play that one again, but I feel like I've shown you enough of this game. I really hope that after you see this, this is going to get you to play this because I cannot tell you how much fun the solo campaign is. I do recommend. So what I did is I started on normal and then went to hard. Start on hard right away because that will make those beginning missions more of a challenge. Uh, I did it that way because I hadn't played the game and I was recording uh, and I really just wanted to do one video per scenario. I've also had a lot of people ask me where to get this game because it's out of print right now. And you can get it on the late pledging uh, site for Aridia. You don't even have to get Aridia. You can just get Zaya from there. I'll put a link in the description below for what I can find for that late pledge. Uh, but yeah, you can just go on to their site. And then I think it's like 70 bucks or something like that. So it's not too expensive. And I would highly recommend, I mean, you have to get the Forbidden Stars to be able to do solo. And then get the Missions and Powers expansion for sure. And you'll be set. As I've said through all the videos, thank you so much for watching. If you've watched all the way to here, you are truly the rock star of Zaya. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll catch us in some other playthroughs.